No, hi everyone. Hi, how are y'all doing today? Welcome on in, everybody. This was what one? Some ancient amber. So we're looking at thirty-three zero million year old amber with a little insect in there. Um, I'm gonna give y'all measurement with uh, King Charles, as uh, the lovely Clipas from McLean has named our ruler, King Charles the Third. So I'll get a sense of the size. We're talking a very small little creature. So we're talking maybe three, three millimeters. And that's like, uh, it's probably being a little bit on that saw. Oh yeah, so this one's a teeny tiny piece. The actual whole, the whole piece of amber for this one is a, a little over a centimeter in length. And then it's a few millimeters. Um, what? What's up, Blueberry? For eight? Fate? Freight. It is uh, the white balance. Um, it tells the soft, it's, we tell the camera what is white, Blueberry. So we've told it that it, the background is currently white, which it is. If I change the white balance, so if we move the little square over here, and we tell it that the yellow is actually white, the colors change. And so it's a different way to look inside the amber and to identify what's exactly happening. Sometimes we get better visibility if we change it. Uh, TD Fox, I don't know what that means. The good new today, Cyan. What does that mean, TD Fox? By the way, welcome in. So we're gonna zoom in now. Yeah, this first piece is quite clear for us today. Uh, we've been having some not so clear pieces, so I just went ahead and tried to get one. Oh, yes, well I was there, TD Fox, yes. I did hear, and it's it's not, there wasn't good or bad news, right? There was just news. Uh, the lovely dev revealed um, what uh, kind of baby she's gonna be having. If it's a little boy or a little girl. Uh, and in order to ask and figure out, y'all should go follow the lovely Derek and Devin over on Moco Made. And uh, you can ask them, them who, it, what kind of little gir girl or little boy they're going to be having. Since that is their news to reveal and not mine. But it is a, it was a very, very, it was very, I, I had a suspicion. I had a suspicion. Just by, by looking at Dev, I had a guess. And I was luckily right, so that's, uh, that made me smile. Human baby indeed. So are these Arista or Stylite antenna? I need to zoom in a little bit more, Cliff, to be able to tell. So let's go ahead and do a zoom in. Cliff, Cliff did hit it earlier, Smikes. But he can hit it again. Cliff, would you like to hit it again? Thank you, Cliff Alice from McLean. No! Smikes! Poor Cliff. Poor Cliff just really wanted... I we just wanted to be... Did the hit it and hit it for it. So let's take a zoom in look, Cliff. <laughs> No tears, Smikes. No tears. No tears. Cliff, it might be a better angle from the other side. But there, okay, so that's that's actually a pretty good look. Yep, we can see the Omatidia. There's five. Kind of five Kevins. They're okay on the material front. There is a lot of distortion because of the focal plane. It's going into, um, it's going into a piece. Uh, this is a new one, Tarzan. This is a new one. Yeah, brand new one. I haven't looked at it before. I'm trying to look at the various types of the antennal structures they have. I think. It'll be easier. So 
Gwen, let's see if there is um if there's any halteers here. So the halteers would be this under underside balancing. It's alive! Alive! I've always wanted to say that. But Actually, the hairs are very nice and visible. So, Gwen, this is a silly little aside. This is totally irrelevant to your question. But in fruit flies, these back hairs are something that we use in order to classify mutants and wild type. They're, it's called a genetic marker. So you can link it to a mutation. And then you can tell by looking at your fly that there's a mutant in there or there's a wild type. So all the mutants get this visible marker and all the okay, wild education ones. education and some inspiration yeah. spitting from the heart. I know that I got the chemistry spit, the science, it's my heart. And so, what you can do, uh, Tarzan, is look underneath the microscope, and so there's some mutations called singed. Singed, the little hairs curl backward, and they look like they've been lit with a lighter. So if you light your uh, piece of hair strand on fire, it curls right back, like has this... Um, really tight circular zoom back pattern to the tip of the the hair follicle and that's what the singed mutant looks like there's also a couple of other ones that have different length hairs that we use as uh, visible markers guys go check out nerdowino legendary nasa scientist extraordinaire who we say as nasa in the his house or in the heezy or in the fishizzle uh nerdowino It is like a fur all, yeah, Tarzan. So that's that singed mutation. And there's a couple of other ones there as well where you can alter the number of hairs and actually alter the hair number and the hair length are usually the, the big ones. And then the, the singed is quite a unique feature as well. Nerdowino doing all right, a little tired. Little ones decided the past couple of nights, actually starting very late, I guess Friday night to Saturday morning that she doesn't need to sleep through the night anymore. That sleeping through the night is for suckers. Um, and she wants to eat at 4 a.m. Which is fine. Which is fine. I, my suspicion you know, is that she's having a growth spurt. And so she's just eating a lot. Which is fine. That's that's why we're there. Um, but it makes us a little bit more tired. Nerd we know. Makes us a little bit more tired. But otherwise, we're looking at some beautiful amber. Sample would have, have a cute face, not a roach, but a cool sample. I hope there's a cute face, Gwen. Let's actually change the white balance here a little bit. See if we get any different look to it. Run your batteries right down. I don't know about that, Nerdowino. I actually got a good recharge in New York City over the weekend. Um, hanging out with Torrid Knight and Dougie. always wanted to say that which was a lot of fun uh walking through the streets of new york with her freestyle rapping to people nerd we know it was as incredible as when we saw in la here smikes we can see the omatidia a little bit clearer with the white balance but you can see there's still these like streaky patterns to it and i think that's due to the depth of field um your batteries are recharged someone else is a run down there are we well, yeah well don't worry, Nerdowino. I, hu I hung out with the little one. So, Nerdowino, I was the one who got up in the middle of the night. Like, so I went to bed on Friday at, like, 1.30. And I was up at 4 feeding the little one. And then, um... I was up again at, like... 8? And uh, I, did, I left around 9.30. So, I didn't get much sleep that, that day. So, I came home... I left New York around 11, so I got home around 1. But it was good. I did, Ash, it was a good Saturday. It was a very good Saturday. The rest of it was okay. It was a good Saturday. Chat, let's go ahead and try to flip over the sample and see if we can have any more clarity to the sample. Oh, Gwen, I am so sorry. Maybe we can still fix this, Gwen. 
I travel the world. Conservation, we like to keep things. We do. Things are kept pretty kept simple. Ah, Gucci. Travel the world, you're doing Gucci. Excellent. Travel the world, I am. We were just recounting. I'm a bit tired. But I'm doing all right. How has your day been? I hope it's been an okay Monday. As far as Mondays can go. We're just traveling, looking at our first amber sample. Trying to, it's, it's a very small one. This, this, the insect is about three millimeters and the actual piece is a little, little over a centimeter in length. So like the whole piece of amber, so it's super tiny. So I'm just trying to adjust things so that we can get some visibility here. And um, Gwen is now gonna be disappointed because there is a lovely bubble. There is a lovely bubble <laughs> on the face of this critter, which is what we were trying to go for, like a, a, a nice, um, a better component of that. Also, uh, Ash, this is 30 million, three zero million years old. The other thing, Gwen, I don't know if you can tell this, but this side is actually scratched. You see, Gwen? This uh, beautiful scratching uh, makes it even harder. So we're gonna fiddle around and move stuff. I had high hopes. I know, I know, Smikes. Guys, go to Daybreak Stations, aka Daybreak Studios, aka Dawn of Daybreak. Uh, bubble been waiting to ruin our view for 30 million years. That's a patient bubble. It is a very patient bubble, Nerduino. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna change around. I have to physically move stuff now, but we might be able to get an image. Will it be a good one? That's questionable. But not the worst image that we've ever taken, right? It's nightmare fuel with the bubble. It a, a little bit smikes. It almost feels kind of like Bane. A little bit of a Bane feel to it. But I think this one's a cleaner, a cleaner look to it. But yeah, I'm disappointed that we can't see better detail of this creature. I'm gonna try with the white balance now as well to see if we can clean up the color a little bit and get a little bit more visibility. But what are y'all thinking? I, you know, it is freeze and enhance. Trying to find if there's any sign of a halt here. Honestly, it very much has a fruit fly feel to it. Uh, we'll be able to check the bubble, see if air or gaseous material exert from the fly. So Tarzan, we wouldn't be able, in theory, to get any information from the bubble. So there are some machines, Tarzan, that are able to do like air analysis almost. And like trying to analyze what's in the air like what it, it's think of it like a funnel and in the funnel it goes all the the odors and vapors go up this funnel into a machine called a mass spectrometer and it actually tells you the output that you get is okay what are all the smells inside of this trapped um machine this one is probably too low in concentration for us to be able to do that. And you'd have to ensure that the bubble is fully sealed. Now, again, so sealed against either the face of the creature or just elsewhere in the amber to see what kind of air like that you can get out of it. But presumably it's a lot of decayed material and there's not much there at this stage. But it would be, I, I think it should be an experiment we try. It's just, again, the difficulty is when you're drilling to get to the air pocket tarzan that you don't pop up dust as you're doing that process and so you're, you're but you don't want to compromise the bubble's integrity but you need to sh like shave it down enough to be able to get to the bubble so you'd have to have a very very good 
probably jeweler. I would say someone in the jewelry business to do the the hard shaving down components and actually getting to some of these uh, pieces. Uh, with the refraction, it would be hard to hit. That, that's, that's also true. Just that, the optic side of things, it would be hard to hit. So Quoth, it is a fly. It is a fly. I'm leaning on the front of a fruit fly. Given the size of it, given that we don't really have any giant pronounced tall tiers, the antennae are the right shape, or the body is the a right shape, the uh, the size of the eyes in relation to the rest of the head look pretty spot on. So I'm leaning towards this being our common fruit fly on this one. It's pink. So the original color cloth is this. This is the original color. And so um, what I ended up doing is I did a white balance effect. And so the white balance effect is that you just put that little white balance box that we have down here that you can see now is in red and it's just blowing out the whole sample. And so we can do it now. So you do it on this one, Quoth, you see how it, the amber goes back to being yellow? Um, no, you're, no, 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 Quoth, you're good. You're Gucci, Quoth. So it goes back to being yellow. And then if I wanted to take like a closer look and see, like some of the details just don't really get well made out in the yellow. So then I can change the white balance and tell the software, okay, this is what's gonna be white now is actually yellow. And then you see there's this pink hue that forms around. The pink hue is due to contamination as a result of the animal. So some of its color has leached out over time, which makes sense. You're talking millions and millions of years that this sample is like, under high amounts of pressure and preserved and encased in this amber. So that's most likely why it looks like this. Hi, Fortuitous Traveler. How you doing, Fortuitous Traveler? Um, it's really pronounced, Quaz. We have moths and softer samples where if those pop... Thank you, Lord, Fortuitous Traveler. If those pop, insect blood or hemolymph leaks out, and that is a major cause of like the, the color contamination. So that's what makes it really, really difficult to see any extra detail. Here, it's a little bit of a halo. So I'm betting it's not necessarily that the, the body was compromised, but rather more than likely, it was just that the color from the body is starting to leach out. The same thing happens, Quoth, if you put fruit flies into a container of ethanol or formaldehyde or methanol, like these preservatives, for a few days, the, the eye pigment starts leaching into the, the tissue. And it will also, if you have it in like a concentrated small amount of liquid, it'll leach out of the liquid as well or out of the body into the liquid. And so, yeah, that's that's what we'd be doing then. Uh, this is sample number one, Gwen. This is sample number one. Actually, Gwen. Gwen, we usually don't do the predictions for these days because it's hard. I don't know, Gwen, how to count the pond water, right? Like, do you count each well of my glass dish as a sample? In which case, you by default have nine. Or do you count each animal that we see, right, there would be, I'm not sure what the optimal answer would be on that front. That, that's why I usually don't do it. When, if, when we've only done, um, when we've only done the amber, I, I would do some of the predictions of how many samples, but then I was worried that sometimes people would be more into just like us speeding through them versus just like taking our nice time. So it just depends on what people are in the mood for. But when, if you want, I can make a prediction of how many amber pieces today. And that would be independent if we did any, um, pond water. No worries. Okay. Just making sure Gwen, Gwen, I want you to be happy. It's very important to me, Gwen, that you're happy. Um, what I want to do now, folks, is I do want to try to sex the animal to see if we can figure out if it's male or female. We should be able to grab that information 
just by um, looking at its abdomen and seeing how expanded or not it is. Hi, Christy! Yes! How you doing, Chris? Welcome on in. Because that should be a little extra layer of detail that we should be able to get out of the sample. At least that's my hope. Now, the unfortunate part is because of how small the sample is. My hand is going to be in the image, even if I want it or not. Ariella, thank you for the alert. So... It's actually easier for me to see underneath the microscope on this one versus actually us looking real time. This is the, the issue with just the camera. We did find online an adapter for the Nikon camera to go onto this microscope. We put it on our throne list. And so that's gonna be the, the hope is that we are gonna upgrade the port for the camera. And then we're gonna use, um, a Nikon camera, like a higher resolution camera to get better images. The software won't work, but maybe we'll be able to use other software. All right, we might just be able to, so what I was thinking, Smikes, is we can pipe it in via, um, as like a camera source. And so we, while the white balancing will be a little bit difficult to do, we'll still be able to at least get higher resolution images and kind of switch back and forth between like we can still like reattach this camera pretty easily and do the white balance if we need to, but it, the res of the image will be so much better that we should be able to get better photos, um, which is my hope. So we put it on our throne list. Tips in the shadows. Enjoy, Alex. Alex, I hope you have a good uh, dinner as well. So there it is on the throne list. We've updated it to have a camera attachment. It's actually a community challenge. Uh, bubbles! Whoa. Hi, it's Bubbles. We apologize for that. Bubbles, how are you doing? It's Bubbles. Guys, go check out the lovely and amazing, the breathtaking. It's Bubbles. Gamer extraordinaire. Bubbles has the new computer come in yet. I know you got the hey, parts for bubbles, it. Man. I know you got some of the parts for it. I hope it, um... My best horrendo! Best horrendo! Uh, but welcome on in, Bubbles. Uh, okay. Should we do another piece of amber, or should we do some pond water? I'm gonna put up a quick poll. Y'all can pick on what we should do. That was a pretty fast one in terms of the amber. That was a very straightforward one. Um, what's next? Do a short poll. Amber, pond water. We'll do two minutes. Y'all can go ahead and get those votes in on what we should do next. In terms of looking under the microscope, I do have a ton of little creatures. I think in here, I got it from a new site. Still the same lake. They're interconnected. The whole like water strip, but this part was very stagnant, and so I thought um be a neat place to do it yeah you can contribute to the microscope so that's how i set it up smike so throne lets you do one community goal per item and so i set the community goal for that adapter so we can hook up the camera and give it a shot and then it had been on this um, new monitor but we'll switch we'll switch it to the monitor once we figured out the um, the camera adapter again, please ask. Put us on yellow alert. alert. Hi Tarzan. Tarzan, what's going on? Are we okay, Tarzan? I'm nervous. Yellow alert. Oh, yellow alert for Amber. 
I do love the amber. That was an easy one. Oh, we got Pond Waters winning, though, chat. Make sure to get those votes in. Make sure to get those votes in. Two to five, amber to Pond Water. So get those votes in, y'all. We're getting close. Getting close on the time. Uh, but it looks like if Pond Water is going to win, I'm going to get out the... We have to use we have to switch out the base of the microscope for the pond water to make it easier to use so we'll do that all right it is pond water y'all got it let's do the pond water See, so that's actually the inside of the bottom part of the microscope. So that's that light source underneath there. So we put on a base, turn on an overhead light, and we change the white balance. So see how it's a, a little bit of a green hue? Now it's nice and white. And then we flip it over to black. And then we have some nice contrast in there as well. Okay. As you can see, we already have a lot of little creatures in here, and I've only put out one part of the sample. Hi, Gigglings. Welcome in. This and this a very small amount of water. It, Yeah, there's a lot swimming around in here, y'all. It must be ostracod season, which is for Cliff, because Cliff loves the ostracods. And they are just swimming around left, right, and center. It looked like there might be a couple of some flavors of worm in this one. I'm going to sample the other regions as well. See, Big Gamey, that's the thing, right? Without the microscope, you'd have no idea of what all was in the pond, right? Because these... So, Bit, you can see it by eye if you've taken out water and you have it in like a nice clear glass container, but if you're just looking at the lake, you're not gonna see it. And so it's kinda, I don't know, it's pretty neat, I think. I mean, it's a little horrifying too, but it's also kinda neat. Let's see. sample out a little bit more we'll see if we get any more um so these are the ostracods swimming around there should be other critters in here as well it's actually quite neat there's a lot swimming around in the the glass container near the top I'm gonna try to get us some uh, of this moss in as well to take a look and see what's in there. Do not ever drink the pond water. No, 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 no. That's a very good point. It's really bananas. Yeah, 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 yeah. It would be so bananas that I don't know what I would even do. Post Ireland Mini Dream to take up a tin whistle. Good, good, Nerdowina. Nerdowina, I imagine that you'd very much enjoy that. You're a, you're a musical aficionado, if I remember, Nerdowina. Excellent, Nerdowino. It'll be good eventually. Don't you dare say that, Nerdowino. That's your that's your child. 
She's good right now. She's very she's breathtaking right now, Nerduino even. The best tin whistle lists that ever did tin whistle. Okay, we have something interesting here. Not that we usually don't. What are these? Nerduino, I'm gonna pretend that you did not say that. There is no Bose headphones. You are clearly listening to your child play an instrument. And I'm so very proud, Nerduino, that you are using those ears to listen strongly to your child. Gwen, this is a relative of one of your favorite creatures. Assuming we get an image of it. Okay. There we go, Gwen. The hell ant? No, 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 no. A little bit of a cockroach relative. Uh, this is a pond water relative of your roach. It's a, um, it's a little subspecies of krill that we have in here. It's our, I think it's our first krill ever. Gwen, I believe this is the first time that we've ever had a krill that we've caught. Which is um, kind of neat to be able to have one. First time. I don't know why we haven't caught them before. But this will be the very first one. What I think we'll do is we'll change the exposure. Like this. And what we can do, Gwen, is these are... These little creatures eat that moss. Hi, Murgle. How you doing, Murgle Mania? We got our very first krill sample today. So you can see it swimming on around. And you can see here it's actively kicking and right there. Let's see. I can do... When it's stationary, we can get these really good images. Here we go. There is that active movement. What I'm going to do, Murgle, is going to get it some food as well. It's a great day for Krill Seekers. I hope it's gaming. Excellent bit gaming. Excellent. Oh, boy. Nerduino. You're very handsome, Nerduino. We are going to give it some. Watch out for Blint Whales. That one is way over my head. I'm so sorry, Spines. So what I did, Gwen, just for you, I gave it a little bit of food, called an amphipod. Okay. An amphipod. What is the defining factor of this cliff? Oh, here we go. You can get a nice top-down view on this little... Oh. Come on, come on. Well, it's being a jerk. There we go. So that's what it was feeding on Gwen earlier, was it was very much on this, uh, the mosses inside of the sample. And so I was like, all right, let's just give it back some moss so it'll enjoy its time, like have a nice time there. 
the crustacean with seven segmented thorax. Nice. Okay, very nice, Cliff. There we go. Look at that. Thank you, Cliff. Pawn time. Welcome back, Ariella. Ariella, we have... Oh! It left, Ariella. We have this amphipod that we've identified. And by we, I mean the lovely Cliff Alistair McLean, the wizard. That is Cliff Alistair McLean. Part with the legs. Gotcha, Cliff. Oh, and there we go. Gwen, there's your other favorite. There's a mosquito larva. Right down here. We should try and count them. We can, let's see, Cliff. Okay, here we go. If these are the correct segments that I'm looking at, then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You are correct, Cliff. You can see here are the dividing lines. So each one of these turgite ter sections here. Cool, but scary. I know. Well, so Saphir's mom, that's a neat part of this, right? Is like maybe why we should be careful when going into ponds. There's just a lot of life in there. What's also cool is you can see the omatidia or the eyes here, too. You can see the cells right here, each of those individual dots. A little bit blown out in terms of the lighting, but there we go. And then, yeah, there's some mosquito larvae swimming around in this um, mass of leaves. Same kind of whale. I don't think so, Smikes. Almost has the face of a cricket. Again, that's just showing the relatedness between the animals. We'll take another image like this. There's just so much life teeming in this picture. We've got a bunch of the ostracods. We've got the little krill sample here. There's another one swimming down below. And it's neat because we, yeah, like I said, we haven't seen these before. Not a good catch, though. Let's move. We'll move over into the next well and see who else we can find. T the Garys, Smikes. Do you by chance remember when in time we found the Garys last year? Yes, a relative, a common ancestor, Sapphira's mom. Yes. Because I wonder if it's a seasonal issue that we're having with not finding the snails. So I grabbed another little bit of the mosses. Oh, no worries, Smikes. I, I mean, I have a folders upon folders here I can search through. They're all dated as well. Well, Smice, we've got a little shell here. Almost looks like a Gary shell. Right down here. Went on its side, it looks very similar to our snails.
For a second, I might be excited here. I don't think it's what I think it is. But, uh... At first glance, I was like, is this a planarium? I have a sneaking suspicion. Um, the biggest ant today, length to width, is about the size of your hand. And the head of that is maybe from the tip of your middle finger to the maybe second knuckle. So still a large head, right? But in the grand scheme of your hand, the brain isn't that massive. And so even- Hello? Hi, Blueberry! Hello there. Hello there. And actually, let me go ahead and find you an image of this, because the image will do um, a world of good instead of just comparing with my hand. Hi, Jade. Where's Hello my there. drink? What drink? So it's a it's and this is also the queen. Um, custom. So this is not just a regular old worker the queens are always the biggest so that's oh, well that's a terrible image there is variance between these in terms of size as well but Ooh. all right we're just gonna go ahead. So that's just a, a worker, that's not the queen, but you can see the worker is also quite large relative to the size of your hand. And then the queen... There's a little graphic of the queen. Oh, thank you for the hydrate as well, Big Gaming. There is the queen there. So a quite large one. The soldier ants, so Saphir, that was probably the length of just a finger. This one goes much larger. The brains, they never get anything like this big, even there. Um, and Custom, if we go back in time, so the reason Custom asked this question is because earlier in Earth's history, there's different um, concentrations of oxygen in the air which is a limiting factor to the insect size also how they breathe cypher thank you for the follow welcome to the colony cypher um this saphir's man is campanotus giga uh it's in south america it's it, campanotus carpenter ant giga large giant um oh yeah it just says, it says that right there giga right there look at that um, so, five ferrets in a trench coat. Thank you for the follow. You're in the right place. We do love ferrets here. Uh, as part of the raid, toss a, throw a coin. No, it's toss a coin to your Twitcher cipher. But welcome in. Welcome in, you friendo. Um, so even when they're a bigger custom, the brain would never end up getting this big. You're talking maybe the, mo the that size, and it's probably an eighth the size of this brain. And then the, the larger ones that are as a function of the higher... Um, Together, we can rule the galaxy. Dakum! Dakum, thank you for the resub in 18 months! Dakum, thank you so very much. Madame, how are you doing? Happy Monday, fun day. Thank you for that ongoing support, Dakum. Welcome on in, Madame. How are you doing today? In Hanjo, Mexico, do you formally convey your presence? Or is this an informal... This is an informal Hencho. Guys, Hencho always says I formally convey my presence, and I'm just, just curious. So yeah, custom. Never be this big, and you're, the reason you're limited in terms of size of the animal is because of how the animals breathe. They don't have lungs, the insects. Instead, they breathe through tubes that go from their exoskeleton in towards the center of their bodies, called sphericals, and it acts on diffusion. So diffusion can only do so much. You're size limited. So that's you, this is like you're pushing the max size of these animals. Yeah. Does that make sense, Custom? Very good question. But yeah, this brain has a couple of different features. These are the optic lobes. So that's going to the eyes. So the retina would be here. Um, this actually changes with size depending on the cast of animal. 
Um, there's also these little Cheerio things up here are the learning and memory centers. These are the antenna lobes where the antennae connect. Subesophageal ganglion down below, that's what they use to eat with. Um, so it's cool that we can do the prints and teach people about the fundamentals of the biology of the, the, like the neuroscience. Long weekend, so today was a holiday. Dacom, I'm a little bit jelly. Dacom, I'm a little bit jelly, but I'm glad. I'm, I hope, Dacom, that the holiday was good and that you had a, have had a lovely day off. Um, I am getting next Monday off for Memorial Day. So we get next Monday off, which is, uh, will I do what different thing? I mean, I, I won't be working, but I'll be work, stream working, yes, but not work working. But for the Raiders coming on in, welcome, welcome. We are doing some microscopy today. So looking at tiny worlds under a microscope. Um, that is square cube laws. Watching a side doc talk about insects of the past were significantly larger. Yes, but to a point there as well, Cypher. So you're still limited in size because of how they, they breathe. So even with the increased oxygen, there's still only a max size that they could get to. Um, they would have to get to something like an Ant-Man where in that movie remember there's a giant ant playing drums I think it's at the end of the first movie um, That would not be able to live because of how the system is built So you need a totally different way of breathing in those extremely large animals in the movies Yeah, the uh, Antony which by the way Cypress hilarious. It's a misname. That's actually a female ant um, A little bit silly, but Taking this Friday off and Thursday afternoon off, my daughter is taking Wow, 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 yippee, Snoop Dogg into his house. Hi, Boyds. Taking me to an April Wine concert. Okay, hold on, Dakum. Is April Wine a person, or are you going to a concert that serves wine in, from April? Mirmica genus are longer in length. They have skinny... They do, Mergle. Mirmica are like the bull ants. And um, I haven't played with bull ants in person but i do enjoy looking at them they're a very beautiful species um hi hugh catalina wine mixer i mean that would be lovely guys you're not checking out boyd's custom fab he's a making crafter extraordinaire he's gonna be on the front page of twitch this week boyd's well that's big gaming also go follow big game we'll give boyd's a shout out boyd's are you excited about being on the front page of twitch are you excited boys boys do you want to tell us about the event about the big event that's happening, boys, that it's getting in the front page of Twitch. Maybe a little nervous. No need for nervous, boys. There's going to be hype trains. There's going to be lots of love. There's going to be sales through the roof of all things wood. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and grab uh, Boyd's merch store. Usually we're on this, Boyd's. I apologize. We were not on this today. Let, I'm, I'm going to get it done for you, Boyd's. Don't worry. Hold, please, Boyd's. I'm so sorry, chat. So sorry, we're, we're low on this. All day raid train on Friday supporting JDRF, which is a type 1 diabetes charity. Nice, boys. And I think we had a bunch of um, other friendos who are also part of the raid train, if I'm not mistaken. Right, boys? There's I, I saw the poster today. I just I like I'm now spacing on who else is um is part of it. Y'all, please uh, go follow Boys Custom Fab. There is his website up above. And I go purchase all the items from his store um, to make sure that he is totally out of stock for everything by the time the, the big raid train happens so that he has to make a bajillion more items. Yeah, go go follow Boyd's Custom Fab. Boyd's, I love your face so very hard. Uh, Boyd's, I apologize. We'll get you a fancy pants. Thank you. I'll shout out in just one moment. There we go. Uh, Kids, Bay Bros, Police, Tanum, Way Cool Wood. And yes, yes, that's, yeah, I saw, I saw. Kits, Babe, and Tatum um, are very are close friendos here as well. Who I was like, oh yeah, that'll be really exciting, boys. Good luck, my friend. And um, yeah, I'm, I want you to cross ten thousand people. That is my vision, boys. Over ten thousand people crossed. I had a good weekend. Um, we I went to New York for Saturday and hung out with Doug Shells and Towards Night and Andrew and Schmakies for most of the day. I was a fuddy-duddy, and I, um, would be ants, but about yes. I came home, I left them in New York around 1045, 
11, and then I got home around 1 in the morning. I think they stayed out until like 3. I wish I could have had the stamina for it, but the little one didn't really sleep the night before, so I was running on a um, pretty low amount of sleep. And then the lift that we took into the city um, from the tip of New Jersey where Towards Night lives was one of the worst drivers I have ever sat in the car of. And I was, I was so like motion sick that I didn't recover like this bad headache until the next morning. Guys, go follow Boyd's Custom Fab. Gonna be on the front page of Twitch doing a charity stream. Please support our friend Boyd's. Uh, I mean, it was beautiful, Boyd's. Don't get, even with a headache. It was very surreal. She even invited me in. She was doing live freestyle raps on her, uh, on her stream. Like, in, in Towards Night's place and invited me into the room as she did freestyle raps in front of me. I was like, oh my god, this is the coolest thing ever. Uh, you were meant Avril Lavigne autocorrect change to April Wine. Or Amy Wine of House. Yeah, I, I have no idea what the April Wine concert is, Gwen. But yeah, Boyd's Raiders were looking at my, under the microscope. And uh, trying to find little creatures. In particular, we usually are tardigrade hunting and nema, nematode hunting. We have some ostracons in here. And there is some kind of something here. I'm going to grab it with some forceps so we can isolate it. There we go. We do have a little worm. This one was identified last week by Cliff. It is a relative, I believe, of uh, nematodes. Nope, no, nope, this is something totally different. Sorry. This is a totally different creature. You can see the sensory bristles that are coming off it. That is a brand new one right there. You're doing a little auction? Ooh, Boyds, what are you auctioning? Together, we can rule Big the Amy, galaxy. how dare? Big Amy, thank you for the reset for 17 months. Big Amy! Master Lee, thank you, BitGamer, for that reset. Bit. It doesn't feel like 17 months, nor does it feel like... It feels like it's been very recent, but also forever that we've been friends, my friend. Thank you so much for the resub and your ongoing support. Appreciate the heck out of you. Thank you so much, Big Gaming. Far, far too kind. Far too handsome. Thank you for all that support. A few items from the community. Custom kitchen knife. Janie Flippadoo! Mug and two to three other items. Noise. Blueberry, we just put this one under the scope. This is a friend for Cliff Alster McLean. I thought this was the one that Cliff ID'd last week, but it looks very different when we, as soon as we zoomed in. There's a bunch of side sensory bristles on it. Does it have a face? This looks like it's the head cliff. But I don't see a face. I don't see a face here. In a hole? Look at no, we're feetsies. looking in a microscope. Look at blueberry. its little feetsies! Not looking in a hole. Well, I guess there is a hole in the microscope, Blueberry, so that we can look through it. There we go. So it is reactive. You can see the, in the these are the sensory bristles. And this is moving far more than the other side. Yeah, it is pretty active. I, I do like that we can see the internal organs moving around. I think that makes a huge difference. For those interested, we do take images on Microscopy Mondays and occasionally videos. And we also upload them onto our Discord. So if you're interested in seeing more of this creature or like the videos or anything that, you know, is on the stream, it's all on the Discord. There's a channel called Microscopy Images. They're all uploaded there so that folks can download them and look at them at their own leisure. But yeah, we can see the, the bristles moving and the internal movement there as well. 
Maybe we'll have a second sample that we can also use to identify and get a little bit more information from it. I did take a video of this uh, movement, so if y'all wanted to see it, but it's a really cool movement that we have here. And then we'll take a look at the other end of it. Like there's a little bit of injury that happened here, if I had to bet. This looks like there's a little rupture with some tissue out there. Guess on our produces asexual. So the reason I suspected it may have been custom as a relative of our nematode is because of the internal anatomy. It we also saw one similar last week where it looked kind of like this from the internal element. Gotta go to social activity. Enjoy Ariella your day and congratulations on unlocking affiliate. I'm excited to see the Ariella emotes. Very excited for it. Have a good one, Ariella. So like this custom, the internal anatomy, this is like all just gut tissue. We had a similar appearing one last week. And again, that was a relative of planarians where they reproduce just by splitting. So it would be like an asexual reproduction. Given that they have all these sensory bristles, that actually points to more advanced neurological systems. Because that, what you have there then are neurons that are stemming from like the central brain to the rest of it, like the rest of the body. That's not a nematode, Blueberry. Ah, you are wholesome as fat. Yay! Pictures of this detritus worm. Okay, so this might be a, detri a detritus worm here. Let me Google some photos here for us quick. So based on the sensory bristles, it usually points to a more advanced neurological system because they have to be able to communicate with one another. And actually it's, yeah, it's kind of neat that they have a similar here is the, the cool um, look between it. So like some things that might end up in your fish tank, they say are planarians and distritus worms. Check that out in a black light. So custom, that would harm them. So you would actually be inducing radiation on them. So back in the day, in the early 90s, and actually I guess through the mid 90s they did this, for mutagenesis, um, the way you mutagenize a genome is to shine UV light on the animal and then hope that it hit elements of the germline. And so then when they bred, the next generation would have um, like mutations. No, 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 not the 90s, through the, the 1900s, through the 50s. 50s, Spikes, up through the 50s. If I said 90s, I apologize, Spikes. Um, they've, we've gone to other kind of chemical mutagens since then customs, um, so you can feed them mutagenic agents that would again mess with the genome uh, and hopefully integrate into the germline and there would be a lot more factors like that. That and oh, I don't want that. But yeah, UV would cause a um, mutation. Same reason why if you put your arm under UV, um, why you could increase your likelihood of getting cancer. I just want your photos. Show me your photos. The detritus worm looks pretty on point, Cliff. Here we go, this image here. I think that's pretty on point. Actually, Cliff, you can see the little fuzzies in this image as well. Um, we'll open it up in a new tab. And you can see the sensory bristles here too. Right, oh, you can't see it. Right along the bottom here, or again, there it's, it's hard to get into the focus of this image, but those are the same sensory elements that we saw earlier. And uh, well, ours swam away, but we'll go, we'll go ahead and refine it. Must still be around here. And Blueberry, you keep hearing about Jern.
So annelids like earthworms. Okay, cool. Cliff, you're a very powerful wizard of detection. There we go. Whoa. Oops. Gucci. Indeed. Indeed, Big Gamey. That, that image, though, is not a Gucci image. It's a very, very bad image. Gucci, Gucci, goo. Now we'll get the Gucci, Gucci, goo. That was our friend Coffee Rocks right there. And speaking of Jern, folks, make sure you follow Irish John Games. Not Jern line. Back in Gucci. That is actually John saying it. Where's John? There we go. Blueberry, you do not have access to that sound, Blueberry. Only Coffee Rocks has access to that sound. Plus the mods. Okay. Let us continue on and see no! what we can find. Thank you, BitGamey. Oh, BitGamey, how dare. How dare, BitGamey. The absolute legend, BitGamey. No! Pants around your pants. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Big Gammy. I like the pants around your pants. Vid, I almost sang that song for you on Saturday. But then the the the, the feed died and I couldn't sing for you, Big Gammy. I'm sorry. We were close, Big Gammy. There's also a random wing here. Which I figured why the heck not take a look at it. It looks like some flavor of fruit fly. Should have freestyle with Thuggy? No, 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 Boyd's, Boyd's. I do not have the talent for that, sir. New motherboard today so I can breathe a little. What if it's not the motherboard? At least I'll know. Big Gamey, I was so upset about your uh, experience with those people. So what's kind of cool here, chat, I don't know if you can tell off the feed, but there are um, rainbow patterns here on the wing. So you can see there's red Put us on yellow alert. and some blues. Nugent, what's wrong? Maybe nothing? Whatever. Yeah. Hi, Nugent. Why are we on yellow alert, Hugin? Hugin, what's wrong? Why are we on yellow alert? Hugin, is it because Boyd's mentioned our queen, Thug Shells, and I didn't do the shout out? You're right, Hugin. You're right. That was very much naughty of me. We're going to fix that right now, Hugin. Guys, go check out those amazing Thug Shells. How's that, Hugin? Is that better, Hugin? We took care of it. We took care of it, Hugin. We took care of it. We go to the Tooth Fairy, maybe Spartacus. But the reason why this is cool for the wings is that all wings actually have these prism patterns. We just can't see it without the appropriate lighting. So the only reason you're seeing it right now is because of the two LED lights that I have on it. And that's showing this reflective shimmer pattern. Insects have the vision to be able to see this. Like they see wings naturally with these prism patterns and those they actually have information there. Uh, and yes, there are wing veins here as Cliff points out. They're actually quite thick. Um, they're usually much thinner on a regular common fruit fly. It could be Cliff that they filled up with water. They could have expanded, so that is... I just realized that's one possibility. Sometimes with the osmotic pressure, they'll open up a little bit, especially since we have that rupture. That may have been what happened. But these communicate, actually, quality of mate. So they've done mate preference experiments and you can actually get fruit flies that have more reds and, or more blues and then give the males to a female and see which the female prefers to mate with. And so you can see if there's fe a female preference for one over the other. And what they actually find is the females do have prefer slight preferences for the blues over the reds, but it turns out the blues are actually thinner sections of wings and those can actually lead to damaged wings. So there is an evolutionary trade-off happening here where thin wings are cooler 
like the females like the thin wings better because of the blue color but if you have just a ton of blue on your wings you're more likely to rip your wings and die before you're able to um to have any kind of mating makawaka hi makawaka how are you doing today did you do any walks today makawaka anything fancy in nature i hope you had a lovely time thank you again for that raid yesterday we're just looking at this wing and talking about the the fluorescent features of it of having all these like reds and the yellows and the blues there also there yes their vision is more adapt than ours they're able to see something like this well i did some experiments back in the day you can put them into a box the fruit flies and change the wavelength of light that they're able to see just by wrapping like um oh what kind of wrap serum wrap around their container that is like a red color or a blue color and so then the only light that gets through is that wavelength so you can artificially get them to see only particular wavelengths of color and then so if you take a fly that has primarily reds on its wing that isn't that attracted to the female and then you put it into a container with thin winged flies and then put it into a box that only allows blue wavelength of light in that preference goes away so again it shows how the flies are seeing and they're using the natural wavelength of light to be able to see these details of the wings which i think is kind of neat so just a little aside of like finding a random wing in the sample it's what sample is that? supernatural rider hi hello there super we have um Possibly a mosquito larva for you? Super, did you fix the stream? Did it get fixed, Supernatural Rider? Did it get fixed? Why did it nerf Supernatural? It didn't? Why? That's not cool at all. I don't know what to do to fix it. Super, do you have a new computer yet? Or are you still streaming off your phone? It keeps collapsing randomly. I don't like that at all, Supernatural Writer. You do have the new computer. Okay, cool. Is it working all right? I know you were asking some in the channel if there's a, for like computer advice. Guys, go check out the lovely and amazing Supernatural Writer. Yeah, super. We're looking at some pond water now. I'm trying to see what flavor creatures that we're finding today working all right but i don't know what keeps drops keep happening yeah that's not cool super it's also not helpful if you're trying to stream sporadic issues big gaming i'm still upset about your computer issues sir and then the the place you took it are like well it could be any number of things it's like yes it, it could be but i brought it to you here so that you can tell me what they are did anything I could think of? Well, super, make sure, you know, ask away. The internet usually has some good ideas on that front as well. At a loss? That's fair. I also, yeah, not, not entirely sure what it would be, but I have faith that you will figure it out. Any number of things I was wanting. Hi, Epoch. If it is any number of things I was wanting you goobers. What do you mean? What uh, Epoch, what's going on? Hi, Epoch. Sorry to make me upset because a brand new computer should just work. Well, I mean, super, it never just works. If you're, especially if you're talking to OBS and got a bunch of things going, it's never that straightforward, unfortunately. There's always, always something that's breaking left, right, and center. Well, oh, oh, for the tech, oh, for the tech peeps. I gotcha. Yes, I gotcha, Epoch, gotcha. Hi, Moo Hoodles. Moo, how are you doing today? Moo, how's everything? How's everything, Moo Hoodles? Guys, a couple more shout outs. Lovely Epoch, maker and crafter extraordinaire. We love Epoch's face here, and you should too, chat. You have to wait zero seconds. Hi, RPG Fandle. Guys, go check out Epoch. Go follow Epoch. Also, hi. How you doing, Moo Hoodles? Uh, 
Uh, looking like, yes, so Epoch, we've done some amber microscopy already. We found a lovely little uh, tiny uh, worm. Not worm, sorry. Um, a fly in there, about three millimeters in length, so a super small one. And then this, at first I thought it was a mosquito larva, but the more I look at it, I think less and less of it, because it's moving with uh, almost paddles on its feet. And so I'm betting it's actually not one. given how it's crawling. Usually the mosquito larvae flail their tails back and forth for movement. This one's using almost these front legs here to have a movement. You can see the two eyes here. Middle track, yes, so that's the gut. And actually, boy, do you can see where its meal is based on the color, so that difference in color right there that is um, the most recent meal. Hold on. There we go. That's a little bit better on the contrast front. So that's the most recent meal, and you can actually go down the digestive tract. And there is, um, so there will be fat tissue around the gut, and that's called um, the fat body. And it's, it's similar to adipose tissue in terms of its energy reserves to the animal. This is also a later stage creature because what you can see is there are sphericals right up here. So these are little, they look like they're antennae, but they're not used to smell. These will be part of the pupil case. They're actually be the breathing apparatus for the pupil case. Currently, this is where it breathes from. Most animals that are underwater swimmers breathe through sphericals. And so these right here have tubes that come in and they bring in oxygen so there's diffusion of oxygen into the rest of their bodies through their butt and then these up top will be their breathing apparatuses while they're a pupil case and so epoch doesn't that suck though i feel like microscopy should be something that everyone has access to but unfortunately most of us will never have access to it which is why i think it's so one of the reasons why also i love microscopy monday because we can look at stuff under the microscope but also it brings people closer to the world around them. And this is just pond water from outside, right? So if there's this much life in there, imagine other locations that we haven't been able to see. Right, speaking of seeing, make sure to follow Movie Voodles, who lets you see into the stars. Uh, another science communicator extraordinaire, focusing on space and games and more spaciness. Go check out Movie Voodles, folks. Been streaming on the platform nine years. Recently had the, the stream anniversary. Nine year stream anniversary have any organs so boys the organs are a little bit different in insects so what you'll have in this is that there is a brain i wonder if we can actually see it yeah boy do you see there's a dark region right here so it's in between the two the two eye cells so this dark mass you can see there's some darkening here that shape is the brain so we can actually dissect it open i'm not going to kill an animal on stream but you'd be able to pop it on open and you'd see the brain in there um, there's also the gut so like the from the mouth through the body uh the fat body which is the fat cell tissue there is a heart but not the way you might think or classically define a heart they have a closed circulatory system the closed circulatory system means that they um don't utilize like veins or arteries. Instead, the, the hemolymph for the insect blood is free flowing around the animal, it's just sloshing around. And so there is a muscle boids that contracts. And what then when that happens, it, it causes the insect blood to slosh around. So just forces the blood to move around a little bit but it doesn't go through this muscle again it's just a solid muscle and just like contracts again similar idea to a heart but it isn't as defined in terms of where things are going and how they're structured just because of the function of how these animals work uh it's so cool to see all this stuff i was listening to podcast science versus 
They were talking about phages. Oh, like bacteria phages? Yeah, it's like, um, bacteria phages are really cool because they also, Epoch, are used for experiments. If you're trying to infect a bacteria with a genetic construct, you could use a phage that would go and pierce through the bacteria and inject the genetic construct that you're trying to get into it. And so then it can integrate into the genomes. There's a lot of really cool phage biology. And then voids, you can see some of the digestion happening here. A scale of how long this is. Oh, shoot, let me see. This is probably seven millimeters. Not very long. Hi, Michael R. Hassler. Michael R. Hassler, how are you doing today, Michael R. Hassler? Welcome on in. And then the little things around it, uh, voids are ostracods. So these are, um, again, they're they're all in our aquatic samples right now, like in the pond water. They're all up in there. Um, and then on top of it, there's these little gliders as well. These are really cool, but they're a nuisance to take an image of because they tend to be zipping around. What's neat too is you can see it has some rainbow reflective colors on here. That is structural color. That is, they're not actually that kind of fluorescence. Um, but yes, boys, it is a me that metallic sheen. So it is a, it's structural color on these animals. Um, why am I blanking on the word? They are iridescent, iridescent in color. And again, it's, it's weird. It doesn't seem to go with regular halogen bulbs. You need LEDs to really be able to bring out the this metallic sheen and like the iridescence of these animals. Same thing with the wing. It doesn't seem to work with the regular lighting that we have. It has to be like the LEDs that they're strong enough to, I guess, clash a certain way to bring back. Big gamey, have a safe drive, big gamey. You handsome devil. Is he cleaning? It's. Oh, it's not clear, Smikes. It almost looks like I'll be back. Big Gamey! <laughs> Have a safe drive, Big Gamey. You handsome devil. It almost looks like he's just doing eating, like almost in, in like movement behavior. And here's another one. I, for, I forget what these critters are called. Boys, these are, um. Again, one of Cl Cliff here is uh, the wizard at identifying these animals. And Cliff had ID'd that one as well. Looks like it does look very hungry, Tarzan. Um, you can see its last meal is right there. That darker mass. And you can see it go down the entire length of the body. Should go back to Lurk. Enjoy, Moo. Thank you for being here, Moo Loodles. Welcome back. And there's also some paramecium, it looks like. They are tiny, single-celled organisms. And there is one, it looks like. That's a little paramecium. The way you can tell it's a paramecium is by the, the shape of its body. If it's a more oval shape, like that one, then it's most likely a paramecium. The more circular spheres are most likely to be an amoeba. The amoeba also have these little blebs because they are, um, they have what are called podocytes or these fake feet that stretch out and allow them to climb over. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's moo, 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 moo. Moo hoodles. I do the same for you. And ma'am, listen, moo hoodles. We're on the ambassador poosh now, moo hoodles. So we much appreciate your view because um, the ambassador poosh also uh, requires a certain view. <laughs> Hi, Jimmy! Bum, bum, bum. Got any grapes? Hi, Mr. Jimmy B. How you doing, Mr. B? Uh, where was this pond water? It says fear. This is a 10-minute walk from my house. Um, and it is uh, a little pond. There are no veins in this hue. This is an open circulatory system. So the blood is just sloshing around all over the place. No veins, no arteries. Together, Claire! we can rule the galaxy. My God, Claire, we're almost at two years. Thank you for the resub, madame. Welcome on in, Claire Burr. How you doing, Claire? Welcome in. 
Uh, they're so vibrant. Yeah, they're very pretty, boys. They're very, very pretty. Guys, go check out the lovely, amazing Jimmy B93. Jimmy, how are you doing today, Jimmy? Um, how are you feeling? Are you almost ready for the marching band? Oh, I'm doing all right, Claire. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm going to be honest with you, man. I'm a little tired. Little one decided to, um, that she doesn't, she was sleeping throughout the night for about a month. And the last three days, she's like, no, I, I changed my mind. And I, I, we think it's because she's going through a, a growth spurt. Uh, New Jersey, United States of America, Saphir. Uh, no, no. Well, I mean, it was before the trip, too, Claire. The morning of my trip, when I left, it, I got, like, four hours of sleep. Which is why I came back at, like, I left New York around 11 and got home around 1. Uh, March is going great so far. Now, just counting down. To the it's morbid grade. time. Um, are you excited, Jimmy? I'm excited to see you guys. I get to see Jimmy B93 this weekend with the lovely music girl, Andrew CZ and NMB96. We're going to have a big barbecue. I get to cook for Mr. Jimmy B. I get to cook for Jimmy and make him a delicious meal item. And especially he wants a sauteed watermelon. I don't know why, but we're sauteing watermelon. We're sauteing watermelon here. Um, it's going to be lit. Possibly Jimmy, with, especially with all the watermelon, right? Chat, Jimmy doesn't like watermelon. So I'm tempted just not, not to get any watermelon at all. But watermelon's a staple for a barbecue, so it's hard to figure out. But yeah, Jimmy, we're just doing some microscopy. So I have pond water right now. Um, Music hard... girl, please! I don't want to get it together. I'm scared. Music girl! Hi, Music girl. Welcome on, Music girl. Music girl loves watermelon, just like Jimmy. And just like Jimmy, Music girl loves fish. Hi, Music girl! Music girl. Are you ready for this weekend, music girl? Thank you, Claire Burr. Thank you, Claire. Appreciate you, Claire Burr. Thank you for the lurk. Music girl, welcome in as well. Music girl, Jimmy, I'm told, has been misbehaving. Told he's been misbehaving. Because uh, he's been very naughty. Very naughty. So this is a midge larva. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you, Tarzan. Giggalinks, how dare. How dare, Giggalinks. Chad Gigglings has triggered the ferret. We'll do the ferret in just one moment. I'm going to go use the restroom because if we're going to ferret, I need to restroom real quick. And then we'll do the ferret. Well, the ferret will go through the chat and tell you all how bad I have breath. Thank you, beautiful, amazing people you are. Gigglings, you know very well what. You know very well what you did. You triggered that. You know. You know what you did. Hi, Carlo. Chad, I'm apparently not allowed to use the restroom. Hi! Gotalo, man, not use the restroom. May I, may, should I wait to use the restroom, Gotalo? Should I wait? I'll be ready for you when you come back. Okay, excellent. Chat, Gotalo, the stream scribe is here! Chat, we're gonna do some live letter art. We're gonna do some live letter arts and some beautiful things with the lovely Gotalo. Uh, while we're doing some microscopy, it is the function of, or the beauty of Scriboscopy Monday. So, I was gonna put up a quick BRB. Did I remember to update the BRB screen? No, I did not! Just because I'm a goofy goober. But while I'm doing, while I go run to the restroom, please enjoy the BRB screen and eventually I'll put in the, uh, the video. I did remember, I did do this. Not this one. Hold on. Carla, hold on. This one had already been going. I did another one. It's on a randomized. It's on a randomized for the same thing. Dang it! I did smikes. This did take me like forty-five minutes. Your art. Okay, I'm just gonna grab this link and put it into our collab channel. We're going to go dark for a moment, folks. Don't get scared. It's going to be fine, possibly. It was, it was fine. It was, everything's fine, chat. Hold on. Hold on. Everything's okay. Maybe. Hey, we're going to move the, move the closed captions over a little bit. Look at that. Closed captions are set. Is Carlo there? Look, there's Carlo! 
He's above my head, Chad. He's above my head. He's doing live. We're going to do live letter art. I know. I was scared too, Epoch. Listen, I... Epoch. When I lived at our very first house, there was a downstairs. And no one, no one slept down there except when my grandma or grandpa were visiting. Or And my dad's office was down there. If no one was down there, it was all the lights were off. It was very scary. It was a downstairs. It's Mike's. And I would run up and down those stairs in fear if I had to get something. Because I was terrified that someone was there and it was going to, like, I don't know. Put us on yellow alert. Hurt me or something. It was very scary, TV Fox. It was very scary. Love Carlos Art. I have his art of my name framed by my desk. Nice, Whatever. Epoch. As long as I have a torch, it's a fear. That's, that's, a fair, that's a fair assessment there. That is a fair assessment. Uh, so, chat, this is God of the Streams kind of above my head, doing live letter arts. And then we're also doing um, some pond water microscopy as we do with the lovely God of Carlo. Thank you again for being here. I hope that everything went well, my friend. Carlo, folks, streams Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Please go check him out. Extremely handsome, extremely kind, and uh, just on all that. A legend. We love Carlo here. Please go drop him that follow. Please go drop him that follow, chat. Um. Okay. So let's continue looking at our Samp Dig larva in here. Dig larva! Woo! Oh my goodness. What a beautiful tootie. So we're going to go over in the other wells in just a moment and see who else we can find. Wonder if we'll find anything else interesting here. We're still looking Look out. Look at its little feetsies! Look at its little feetsies! There are feetsies. We actually have a pupa here. Right there. So that is a develop the pupil stage of something. Right there, so that's a developmental stage. So it's inside of a cocoon. Giggalinks, your piece is done, Giggalinks. What do you think, huh? Isn't Giggalinks have a beautiful piece of art there? <gasps> it is beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah, that is the pupil case right there, and it looks like it might even be hatching because of how much wiggles you're having there. Usually those dark patches along the sides are the wings, but it's it's an interesting looking creature. At first I thought it might have been some kind of um, fly larva, but given that it's underwater, not entirely sure what it is. In my, by rough eye, I think it's also too early to be undergoing eclosion or hatching so like these will be like where the wings are usually are and then you have eye spots on either side but given it's already wiggling you can see some internal movement happening maybe it's ready to go soon okay you got it blueberry she was okay though she's she sometimes she's okay with the sound alert sometimes she's not but right you do you doing okay hmm? yeah she likes hanging out with her alba which is a Hungarian word for dad. That's what we do here. A little her baby. She's doing well, Epoch. I don't know if she was a were you if she was a good baby for her grandma. If she were, if she was a cool baby. She's all I guess she's always a good baby. She was she was a cool baby or not. Hmm? What do you think? She does have a very nice smell, Nerduino. Well done. Carlo, is that the piece from today? Can't remember. We're going to... Um, thank you, Carlo. Breathtaking soul. So you can see there's a leg movement here. Oh, it's from Friday. Noise. There's some leg movement up here inside this chrysalis. Which is why I was suspect, suspicious that it's soon to be hatching. I know Gwen, Debs is going to be so upset. Gwen, Debs has missed Baby Luna twice now. 
Um, I have gotten my closet clean. Nice, Epoch. Very nice. We need a shoot the baby soon. That doesn't need to be a redeem, Blueberry. Blueberry, if there's a pin message. I think we're okay. It'll also be something like an ostracod because of the large... Yeah, that's that's true, Cliff. It does look ostracod like That's fair. The way it's... it's way it's that stationary movement, though... For future things, nah, we're not gonna do that, though, Blueberry. It's too hard to nerf everything, and I don't want it to be a redeem. Uh, welcome back, Fortuitous. Hi, McZenith. Welcome back. An Ostracod uh, Epoch are these other little critters that are swimming around this stationary one. So they look shape-wise beetle-like, but they're not beetles. Uh, it's just very much in terms of shape and appearance. And there's just a bunch of them. Like, they've, we've had a bunch swimming around. We're, I think we... Cliff will correct me. Um, is it maybe, like, all every sample we've seen so far this this go round we've seen like since we started doing pond water this year the dark spots are the eggs oh okay i see that yeah instead of the where the wing spots would be yeah that's fair what are you, are you hungry hmm? i'll eat your ear hmm? i'll eat i'll eat your ear then hmm yeah, yeah, it's a tasty hat. But that could be. Uh, Spectre, who you look They're a little dusty. Yeah. Uh, beetle like in appearance, but not beetles in terms of genetics. Uh, phone sometimes heads up, others don't. Gotta put sentry watching traffic on the lines, just to be sure. Indeed. 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 Smikes, you gotta. It's okay, Smikes. It's not gonna take. Don't worry about it, Smikes. <clears throat> yeah. He's okay right now, so we can we can do the sounds right now. We, we'll tell y'all if we need to take a break from the sound. Yelona says she has she hasn't said anything yet, Gwen. We have not had first words yet. We've had not not yet first words, but we're you know we'll eventually get those first words. What do you think? Does you like your outfit? It's a pretty cool outfit. What do you see? Light source and roasting the tadpole? No, I can't. It's not roasting. Um, the light source is an overhead light source, so it's not doing the roast on it. If we were doing the underhead under roast, the under light would be cooking them, but they're not on that front. Hi, everyone's saying hi. I'm going to say see ya. Ooh. Cybersecurity stuff. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha, Fortuitous. I wasn't sure what you were talking about, but no worries at all. All right, there it goes. I think, Cliff, you're right in that it looked like, I think maybe those darker spots must have been the egg sources. And because it is more ostracod like in the shape. It's pretty neat to see something like that. I'll continue going. Shall we continue moving, little one? Oh, I think there's some eggs in here too, Cliff, actually. Two bottom teeth a few weeks ago? Nice. So that starts around, I guess you said they're 11 months. So we got a little ways to go on that. But Cliff, would you say that those that ostracon has its um, two ovaries? Then that it's showing off? And it's smaller than the other one, so presumably the egg sacs then are not in their mature stage. Right? Ooh. What you looking at? Hardware getting hot means excess or extra CPU usage. It's not the update. Oh, gotcha, Fortuitous. I thought you meant we were uh, making the animals overheated. They are doing okay because it's an under overhead light, not under. So they're they're good to go. Yeah. She likes. Them. I know. We need your pillow on my lap so you can get a higher look. Doesn't have the the top teeth here. Just those bottom ones. Very cool. Hi, Pootrick. How you doing, Pootrick? How you doing, Pootrick? Humbler John, it is the little one. It is the little one. She is here making a guest appearance today. Hi, Pootrick. You're doing well? Glad to hear it. Pootrick, I love that emote that you came in with. The lovely Trey emote. Any cats behaving the same with... No changes in behavior, Gwen. Actually, Noodle has stopped making sounds 
when uh, little one's diaper is full. She used to hiss at little one when the diaper was full, and now Noodle doesn't really do anything. I nine look nine point five is here, little one. Yeah. What do you What do you think? Yep, nine is a crocheting wizard. Nine is a crocheting wizard. Yeah. Is that cool? That's very cool. Hmm? She does have a point, Quaff. She does have a point, but she's not, I don't know, she stopped hissing. She was hissing for a while every time there was a dirty diaper, and now we're just, now she's not doing it anymore, right? Hi. Quaff, what are we looking at? You see something? Do you see yourself in the, the camera? Is that cool? I know you're such a good stander. You're very good at standing now. This is true. It is true, can of banana. <laughs> Let's move you wanna to go to the next well? Let's see what moves to the next well. And then we'll bring some amber on over too. So this well. Can't tell honestly with with the one hand if we've been here before. My guess is we have because I think oh yeah, we're back to that same one, so we'll move down this way. There we go. Epoch, you were asking about ostracods. There's a bunch here. There's a bunch swimming around there, feeding on some of that moss that we have in there. But all of these little critters zipping around are those ostracods. And I don't know what it is right now, Epoch, but whenever I take a little bit of that pond water out, they are full and teeming in the water samples. And they're just zipping around. There's so many that you can actually, this jar of pond water that I have, if you lift it up, you can see by eye. They're just, you can't ID them as ostracods by eye. You need the microscope but they're just zipping around. There's just tons of them in here. And you can see too, that there's a bunch of different sizes. So we're getting a many developmental stages in here. Um, explain it and learn about ostracods from science. Oh, nice, Pootrick. Heck yeah, Pootrick. Um, waves at Alona, attack him. Get Alona to wave at you. Bye. Bye everyone. You ready? Are you ready for the party to end? Yeah, I think she's ready. Yo, this will be alone. All right, you wait. Bye. Bye, chat. What a good wave. What's your cool baby? All right. Thank y'all. Now you can have this. They can go crazy with the sound alerts again. Um, question Papa, do ostracods have bacteria? Like inside of them? There's usually, so Putrick, inside of these animals, there's a lot of, there's usually like a gut microbiome. So there's some flavor of um, like gut flora that help break down certain things that they've been eating. Um, and so that is a ever-present thing inside of these creatures. They also can get sick. So there are bacteria that can also kill them. So there's toxic elements and there's also um, symbiotic or positive elements too. A daily vote. There's still, so Humbler John, it's between two and three. Um, number two, or number three, sorry, is out in the living room because I, I wore that I wore my thug shelves once in New York and it got wet because it was raining uh, but since then I think it's pretty much dry but yeah there's it's between two and three humbler Don it's between two and three between two and three guys as Putrick did the flex of the plain old tray emotes give our lovely friend plain old tray a shout out as well go follow him he's the one who sings when we are here about the pants around your pants. I like your pants around your pants. Look at that totally amazing tray. As he sings about pants around your pants. Now then, let me see what else we can find. 
it is much easier with both hands. So Epoch, there's a lot more here as well. You can see all the ostracods zipping on around. They're just, the water source is just absolutely full of them. And again, it's like, this is the jar that I got. So I just dipped um, this jar into pond water. And then what we got out, we were just putting under the microscope. I have a little dropper here. go in, grab a little water. And add to our wells and then we just have hundreds if not thousands of these little critters zipping on around. Yeah, so Sophia, the issue it's like is the pricing, right? And like what kind. So like there are cheap microscopes, but if you want for certain things like we wanted it to be able to be streaming, and so it had to have uh, two oculars, it had to have the camera overhead mounted and like all these extra factors that always end up driving the price up. But it does make a world of a difference to do, if you're gonna be like streaming it or just looking at stuff for your own, own benefit. Whoa! Okay, this is the worm from uh, Cliff last week. There we go. Look at that. This one is massive. Let me turn down the exposure a little bit. It is huge. Exposure a little bit more. Yeah, it is just zipping overhead. There's a second one in there as well. Yeah, so not streaming at Safiri, probably. Yeah, you. I still would suggest the two two oculars, so two viewports instead of the one. The one is really difficult to manage, but two is like a much cleaner look to it, so that's what I would suggest using, but it becomes a preference that one. Carlo, thank you, Carlo. What did Carlo send me? Ooh, thank you, sir. Save it. We're gonna pop this in chat and see if we can make things pretty. Okay, let's see if we can make the BRB screen beautiful. Trick, thank y'all for the resub. Sweet in the bell for five months. Thank you so much. And Putrick with the first time prime sub. Thank you so much, Putrick. Thank y'all for that support. Welcome on in. Enjoy the ad free viewing. The emotes made with love. And also, uh, y'all get to now use the sounds and the gifts. So y'all can trigger crazy animations. You can use crazy sounds. Do all the fun things if you wanted to do something like this. Stuff like that you can now do. You gotta be sub gigglings to do those. Hey, where are you going? To find Baldy McNoah's hair, of course. And then uh poo trigger, if you wanted to trigger Trey, it's exclamation point pants to trigger plain old Trey. Shouting uh pants around your pants. And much more you can do. I think we're done on looking at the pond water. I'm gonna do another quick look through, and then I think what we're gonna do 
is uh, move to one more piece of amber. Like last time. Indeed, Music Girl. Actually, Music Girl, wasn't there a couple that we had last time? Like, it wasn't just a single prize that you had to pick up. It was like several prizes that we ended up getting for you. There are our two worm friends. We'll do a little zoom in there. Yes, uh, Juan, this is uh, pond water. Do not eat or drink. Um, there's a bunch of these giant worms. He had a pin and I had a sticker. I feel like you took home more than that, music girl. I'm, I may have gotten a little wild on that front. There we go. There are some additional um, of our little worms. These uh, uh, do reproduce asexually, so they do split in order to reproduce. It's kind of wild to see something like that. I did give you much more. I'm glad I did a good job, music girl. There we go. So you can see there they are hanging out. And they, they're very pointy, whip-like tail. Internal anatomy there. Again, that's the gut tissue. The colors, lining, are a part of their gut. Pretty cool to see that. Can you see them in the pond? So... So Quoth, these live a lot in these mosses. So you, unless you take out the moss and really spread it out, you won't be able to see it and really. Um, the little ostracods that we saw zipping around, you can kind of see if you, like in the jar of water that I have, you're able to see them if you're if, if you know to look for them, you can see them. Uh, but if you're just looking into the water, like, and just standing overhead, you're not going to see these little creatures swimming around. There's it, The water is not clear enough. And I bet that's a pretty universal thing, is that the water is just not clean looking enough to see all these little ones swimming and zipping on around. So unfortunately, if you take, like, a swig of water like this... You can look inside here and you can see them zipping around. Not very well, but just like that there's a bunch of like dots moving. So you can't actually ID them. We have seen Hydra before, Aaron. Yes, we have seen the Hydra. Um, was, yep, that was an annelid worm because of that spiky tail. Yep, Tarzan. It's um, similar to our nematodes, uh, the, um, the C. elegans. They also have those really, really thin whip-like tails. And that's what makes them readily identifiable over... Um, other creatures is like like that tail formation. That's like for a planarian versus a nematode. Victory exactly. Why. That's like their like telltale ID between the two guys. The lovely killer koala is here. Uh, please go follow him. Legendary artist, extraordinaire, also extremely handsome. Um, some people say that um, possibly stinky, but it never me never matters because you're through a screen, so you can't ever smell anyone. We don't have that level of twitch interaction yet nice yeah tarzan no you're nailing it you're nailing it tarzan do you are do you tarzan do you enjoy microscopy mondays i hope so it's one, one of my favorite days and also having carlo here doing live, live art with the microscopy is uh one of my favorite days willy wonka willy wonka did have that idea that's true and look willy wonka has done some questionable things with those oompa loompas Oh, that's the wing. I was like, what on earth is that? Uh, my cross. Oh, awesome. Spicy one. I'm glad you like it. Spicy one. We're about to do some um, ancient amber. So these samples are 30, 30 million years old. Um, and they are have insects in them. And we identify them together as a stream, what the insects are that are trapped inside the amber. Um, and haven't looked at them before, so we usually go in blind. Um only time I've looked at them before is if it's a, a like commonly requested sample, like our hell ant. There's only one of them that we have, and so we're, and we're never going to find one on accident because the hell ant is 90 plus million years old versus the other critters we have are on the order of 30 million. So it's still old, it's just not as old. So if, if you want to see samples that are alive during the time of the dinosaurs, we have a very small batch of those, and it's just easier to ask to see that sample versus these are undiscovered pieces that we look at together. I'm just gonna adjust the lighting. I'm gonna reset the light. 
There we go. All flavor of Gucci. And let's see what amber we have now. We've looked at one earlier tonight and it had a fruit fly in there. So let's do another one. Let's see, and again, the only time I've looked looking at them is when we when I pull them out of the little baggie. And we do we donate some of these pieces to schools when we do our school visits so that the kids can like for future classes can also hold the samples and learn about amber. Only thing I'd be able to identify is the amber quaff. He's very good at it. It's also a lot of practice, right? It takes the time to figure out what to look for, but once you know kind of what to look for in terms of features, I think it gets easier. There's still things that stump me. And I have no idea what they are. And it's, it's actually kind of fun, too, if we are totally stumped, like the whole group is like, we have no idea what this is. It's, a, it's an interesting one. Because then it's like, well, what do we what, what do we even have here? Carlo, that looks delicious, sir. Ooh, okay. Got one. This is going to be a good one. I can feel it. I can feel it, chat. Look at that. It looks pretty good, right? Did you do things like this in college? No, Quaff. No, in college... I worked in a research lab, but that was working on uh, ecology and evolution of the immune system. And then, so like any kind of ID stuff like this, I've just picked up and learning on my own. So there's, there was like some entomology. So here's our sample. As we can see, it's a little bit bigger than our earlier one. So we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. With the wingspan about nine millimeters in length, so a, a much larger sample than what we saw earlier, um, but quite nice. Hi, Kiddo Vision. Uh, kiddo, I have no idea what that means. I'm not going to click that link. No worries. No worries, Kiddo. Kiko, what, what's up, Kiko? What's up, Kiko? Kiko, ask me, ask me, ask me. I'm going to, Kiko, if you don't mind, I'm going to nerf that link. Don't click it. Perfect. I'm going to nerf the link, not because... It's not bad. It's okay. I don't I don't know what it is, so I'm gonna delete it. Welcome in and go ahead. You can ask me the question. Do proteins denature when you cook? They do. It's certain certain proteins at certain temperatures. It's not a there's not a universal temperature that always gets rid of and denatures them, but that's why you cook meat so that in case there's any prion in there, so you denature it and it doesn't reform. Uh, that's why you don't wanna eat raw meat. Kiko, what happened? Are you okay, Kiko? Alrighty. Look at this. Y'all, this is a beautiful sample. In dreams, Sweet one well, is not blueberry. tethered by earthly limitations. What does that mean? Count. Nine. For the longest time, my dad was convinced that we should only eat uh, well-done meat. Otherwise, we'd get mad cow. Cook quinoa. It's supposed to be good because it has essentially amino acids. Does that denature the amino acids, reducing nutrition? Depends, Kiko, on how it's cooked. Um, some proteins don't denature at certain temperatures. Other ones, while they do denature, there is a reformation afterwards if you lower back the temperature. And there are others that you're right. If you cook it a certain way while the protein might denature, if the thing that you're needing is the amino acids. The amino acids are the building blocks of those proteins. So while the protein will unfold, you can still break it down in your gut and then make it um, and break it down into the fundamental amino acid units. But if it's the protein that you want out of it, I, I don't I don't think that's the case. I think you just want the breakdown product, in which case you should be fine. Because it's again, it's still it's getting denatured and it's breaking down further. So it should be all right on that front. Yeah, so you're, you're, I think you're good, Kiko. Y'all want some fries with that? Beautiful, Carlo. Chad, y'all see what the beautiful thing he just made? He just brought art, art to life. Folks, if you don't know Carlo the Stream Scribe, he's live above my head doing letter art and regular art as well. All kinds of art. He's an artist extraordinaire. Please go drop him a follow on, the, on his partner, Pooch. 
And at nine, I love the beef tartare. I just nine, the longest time my dad was convinced that we would get mad cow. And so he insisted that we all eat uh, well done meat. And it was so well done nine that I've now grown a propensity for eating well done meats. Even if I um, don't much want to nine. Just because I'm like so used to it, as it were. I'm going to save the image. Oop, there we go. Parasites and other food. Is, oh, for sure, nine. For sure. But no, nine, it came from um, we were eating a lot of beef tartare. And then there was a scare from the UK that there was. Um, like an incidence of mad cow and they didn't import to the US so it wouldn't have been an issue but my dad just really wanted to be um, like ready to not eat any of that stuff anymore so yeah nine that's why she that's why he ended up doing that which is kind of neat uh, where warm rare cold for I saw lukewarm is that a reference to Star Wars Salmonus. Oh, it is. It is nine. That we can't. I don't think we can yet get rid of something like that. It's too, still too too long in the making, as it were. Um, charped, charred, charred. No. Uh, male ant. So Cliff's guess is a male ant. So Cliff, not a bad guess. We're gonna turn it around. We're gonna look at different angles of it as well. Hope it goes smooth and I hope it gets easier and less. I hope so too, Grand Admiral. They have to cut out drywall. They have to switch out doors. They have to do a lot of stuff. So, oh, I'm hoping that it's a a fast fix once they decide to come in and actually um, approve it from um, the insurance side of things. I hope that'll be done soon. Um, guys, also go check out Grand Emerald Quack, who is a maker and crafter legend and a storyteller. Professional and gamer now as well. Grand Emerald has been um, playing a lot of the new Star Wars uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Base flood. No, thank you. And Boom City, we had a sump pump and we had like the, the French drain and everything, but it rained for three days straight and it fried the sump pump. And that's, that's what ended up happening. Yeah. Tire down here flooded back in 2014 from heavy rain. Sorry, yep, same things, same thing here, stuff here. And unfortunately, I did have a few things that were on the carpet because I didn't think about it. I was just like, oh, I'll leave this item on the carpet, and it's fine, right? Because it's on the carpet. Certainly, that's not a, a a terrible bad thing. And then it it it, it sure enough ruined some stuff on there. How was in our area? We had record rain. Met our, our quarterly water needs in a week. Sounds familiar, Grand Emerald. Yeah, we actually... I don't think it's really been raining since then. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't think we've had any rain, really bad rainfall since then, but it's been it's been frustrating, to say the least. Looked at a house recently with three sumps and a French drain. I was scared it needed that much for the exact rate. And Boom City, we are not like on we're not low either like we're on a on a nice not a very high hilltop but still 15 minutes of rain which is nice as my province might stop from being holy off <laughs> silly hat man i'm so sorry i hope that uh i hope we get the fire under control soon because that is terrifying and i would hope not not something that i would want you to ever have to keep continue dealing with um I'm sorry, silly hat man. I, again, I hopefully, hopefully all that jazz will end soon, and you'll just be you'll just be set to go. Um, so, chat, we're gonna try to ID what this animal is. I think what we need to, it does have an ant-like shape, as Cliff mentioned. This is a fundamental um, ant anatomy. You have the head, you have the thorax, the petiole, which connects the thorax to the abdomen, and the abdomen here. Um, when we had a forest fire 100 miles away this weather, I wonder what could be causing this odd weather. I wonder what, Grand Admiral. 
It might potentially possibly be Grand Admiral. Climate change. Uh, last year there was smoke clogging my. Oh God, silly hat man. That is not silly at all. I am so sorry. That silly hat man. I don't like any of that. I don't like it at all, silly hat man. I know Grand Admiral. There's just no funding for it. Stinging wasp, but no stinger. Grow the fuck up. Weird. You're not children anymore. I didn't mind explaining photosynthesis to you when you were 12, but you're adults now, and this is an actual crisis. Got it? Nicely done, Spikes. Um, so, Quap, this angle, I don't think is yet enough for us to be able to fully tell if there is a stinger or not. Um, there might still be. I'm on the same page as you are. I don't think that there is a stinger, but I will say these bodies are usually very similar between the individuals. So they look very much like if it's a wasp or an ant, those are very similar in appearance and easy for us to start like comparing and dissecting against. 2019, 2020 was terrible for fires here. Five massive fires area combined, one mega fire. Oh, in, in Australia, gotcha. Uh, mud dauber. Let's Tarzan. Let's turn the angle a little bit. Okay. Let's now. Now the question is going to be: Can I take this image? Unfortunately, my hands are in the way. There we go. So this is showing a very common body style of our ants as well. So if it's a winged ant of sorts of these, it's either going to be a male or the queen. Not any of the workers, because those are the only two that have uh, wings. What I want to see, though, is the wing numbers. So normally our ants have one set of wings, and there is a doublet here. Those doublets usually, to me, are some flavor of wasp. But we'll go ahead and try to find something else in here that maybe will give us a better look to it. I'm talking about, tell me, Cliff! Cliff, tell me. Cliff, tell me. I think your answer is strange. So is it more common, Cliff, to have the the uh, two pairs of so four total? The ones that I've worked with, and I was we were looking at images of this a few weeks ago. Um, they had two two wings for one pair. Okay, other ones have okay. So we might have weird weird uh, winged numbered insects. It might be Cliff because they're so old. In terms of their genetics, the Harbignathos, which are the Indian jumping ant, those, from an evolutionary perspective, are quite old, and I wonder if that's what's causing that wing number to be different. Never seen two wing paired ants here. Okay, so the one I've seen are from India, and there is a set from Florida that we've captured. So we're gonna go with Cliff's thing. I like did give the the addendum last time that I'd only look closely to um, the ones that we had. Cliff has done the, re the leg work on it. And so now we know. Now we know, as Cliff House and McLean has said, what we need to be looking for. So it's very well could be. It very well could be then. Another ant. Maybe I'm leaning towards it being a male only because of the abdominal thickness. This abdomen is not on the thick side. Usually that's a sign of a male. But let's see if we can get any more detail here. Ooh, okay, this is a really nice look. So it's a great overhead shot of these animals. And we'll actually be able to see There 
we go. Look at that. What's cool is we can see the ocelli here. The ocelli are the third or the false eye. And they're on top of the head right here. You can see it. I don't think we've ever seen it this clear. That is uh, what they use to detect UV light. It allows for these animals to fly. These flighted insects have to have some number of ocelli. Or if they go outside of the colony for foraging, that's what allows them to orient and know which direction they're going in relative to their surroundings and like how the sunlight's coming. So this is, and the fact that there's three is usually a sign of like a really, of a reproductive ant usually. Some, our, our more ancestral wasp usually have like one large one. Hi, Becca. Welcome in, Becca. How you doing, Becca? Becca, 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 Becca. Welcome in, Becca. How you doing, Becca? Good to see you, Becca. We're doing our microscopy today. And looking at, um, right now, what it's, it's feeling more and more like it might be some kind of uh, ant. And I'm leaning it towards being a male only because of the size. So we might have a male ant here which would be really cool to be able to have identified. Um, let's see. Here is the petiole, so that is the connected piece between the thorax and the abdomen. And it's quite a clean look to it today. Let's adjust the color too and see if we can make it a look. There we go, oh, look at that. We're going to scoot it over a little bit more in the center. Let's see what we can do here. Yes, Cliff. So Cliff pointed out, it looks like Cliff sees it as well. There's a bulge on the petiole. It's not flat, but there's a little hump to it. And that would indicate that it's most likely an ant species. The number of humps, Cliff, would indicate what kind of species given or at least what family the doublet is for fire ants the the singlets is for non-fire ants so that's that dividing line and I, I only see really one hump there heel great my my tie was kind of strong but i'm okay back home with romeo excellent becca i'm glad it went well it is i know quoth it's it's the coloration again it's that color trick that we're seeing um but what's nice quoth is you can tell the eyes so actually, we'll zoom in on the eyes here. The eyes are really, really pretty. And you can see those individual eye cells as well. There we go. See, so Quoth here, all those little circles are the omatidia or the eye cells. And there's the three circles on top, which are the ocelli. Again, that's allowing them to detect the UV light. That's a really nice, nice shot though. Romeo was trying to bite you. How come, Becca? Let's save that. There we go. All dinosaurs of prehistoric fauna were ping digit. No, Darzan. Hi, Kells. Kells, Bells, Kells. Our friend um, Zedman is in the chat, and he his fish emoji, the magic harp, is what I always use um, when you, I go into your stream chat. Kels is an amazing maker and crafter extraordinaire. Please go drop her a follow. She also has an amazing fish hat that looks like magic harp, and it is magic harp. She knitted a magic harp hat, folks. Go drop her a follow, please, and thank you. Please and thank you. Go follow. Go follow Kels on the partner push. Bring partnership to everyone and beauty to people's souls and hearts. All the things. And uh, let me, I'll drop you the emote as well, Kels. Zeb, Zebman might have gone back to lurking. There we go. There is the emoji right there. That magic card. That's like your hat. Um, Kels, we're looking at some amber underneath the microscope. Look, we've identified a male ant here. In particular, ants because of its body shape. 
and then male because it's got a tiny abdomen. That tiny abdomen is part of what we see uh, when we when we sex them in that particular way. It's very. It's just a very tiny body. Thank you, Smikes, for hitting it. Smikes, Kells has a magic car path. Uh, then the follow is great. It is. A, it's. A, it's a very good emote. It's a very good emote. And Zedman, there he is. There is Zedman. Actually, Kells, Zedman, right there. He has a redemption where you can turn him into a magic harp, and he sings songs as a magic harp. It is absolute gold. Hilarious, and uh, it's usually Creed. Usually Creed that um he sings. And it's very... I, I do enjoy him singing Creed. I don't... Anyone else singing Creed, even Creed, is not really for me. But if it's Zedman singing Creed, like he's like, let's go there. As Magikarp, it's gold. It's beyond gold, in fact. It's, it's just... Boom City! It's very good. It's very... In fact, we'll, get, we'll give Zedman a very fancy pants, pinky out shout out as well for that. Let's make our escape. Ah, what open or something like that. I don't know, Zaddy. I don't know how this works. You're just very fancy, okay? Thank you for giving that shout out. For looking cool, Zed man, go drop him follow. He's a full time content creator extraordinaire. Drop him that follow. Up. I sing too as Magic Car. Look, <laughs> and Zedman Kells. You can put her in a hot tub. So you hit the hot tub redemption, and if she has the fish hat on. It, it makes it all the better. She gets angry. She's like, why did you put me in a hot tub? And then she's got the fish hat on and she's just like, why do y'all do this? Why do y'all do this? And we're like, I don't know, cause we can't help it. And then it's fine. She usually forgives us. If not, that's also okay. I don't know what to do. Sometimes we just, we just do this thing, okay? Uh, putting Kells in a hot tub is not advice. It's only, well, Silly Hat Man, you know, actually, Silly Hat Man, I uh, told to follow Kells as well because she has a silly hat. Mm. All right, chat, let's turn the angle of this and see if we can get one good final look at it. I'm convinced that this is a male ant. But let's get a, another nice shot, maybe, of the side. We're not going to get it like that. It's very thin, unfortunately, of a sample. And the thin sample makes it a little bit um, harder to see some of these components, which is a little little stinky. But you know, we do we do what we can, y'all. Cliff, there's actually a nice view of the um, the petiole here with the hump that we were talking about. Right there. So there is the hump right there that we were looking for to show that it's an ant and not a wasp. Getting it in focus, and then we'll take an image. And then we'll also adjust... There we go. So I think we're set on that front. Dead ant, dead ant. Dead. It is, it is a, an expired ant, if you will, Smikes. It is, um, but it is a male, though. It is a male. Yeah, the, so Tarzan, you know what's really cool about the eye is that you can actually see that it's degraded some. I think it's easier with the, the non-yellow background. So if we zoom in here, Tarzan, right up here, this is supposed to still be the same white color but those omatidia have been just taken off. So that has been like um, damage to the eye cells just during the preservation period in the amber, and that's what you're seeing there. So that's those have like kind of chipped away. And it's something that you can also simulate in a lab sample. If again, if you store it in something a little bit corrosive, like a high concentration of formaldehyde ethanol or methanol i think actually all of them might work then it starts breaking down and you start getting stuff like that
Uh, makes it look like Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, it does. It Tarzan. I haven't seen that movie in so long. I haven't seen that movie in a while, but that was a good movie. Okay, so male ant. We got awesome. So chat. I think that's probably a good point to wrap up the evening. I'm gonna jump over into the other chair, and we're gonna we're gonna review what we saw today. If that's all right with y'all. We'll go over the schedule for the rest of the week, all the fancy pants things. We're going to thank all of our raiders and round on out the evening. I think it's a pretty nice spot. We have had a lot of good images today and a lot of cool samples. This week was much clearer in terms of samples uh, than has been. The Tradune. The Tradune. The Tradune. Oh, hi, Kodali. Hello, Kodali. How are you doing, Kodali? Why are we panicking, Hugan? Hugan, why are we panicking? Hugan, why are we panicking? Why are we panicking, Hugan? Hugan, why are we panicking, sir? Or just because, Hugan, which is fine. It could be a just because. It could be a just because, Hugan. Um, so, chat, let's go ahead and review what we saw today. We started off with this piece. Uh, Boom City, we get the amber samples from a supplier who um, he has the appropriate import-export licenses. And so that's usually the difficult thing of getting these samples is making sure that everyone is correctly licensed. Um, and so he's able to import them. These are Dominican samples from, so from the Dominican Republic area. Um, they are 30 million years old. There's also, um, we do have some older samples that are from China. They're 90 million years old. Actually, this gentleman has been able to start getting some licenses for those samples as well so we've got a couple of cretaceous samples too which are really neat prehistoric planet is as amazing as the first season i have not watched either i'm gonna i'm gonna level with you hugan i have not watched either lita watched the first season but i have not watched either of them i've i think during the summer hugan that'll be what i'll watch because usually hugan what i've been doing is in the mornings like on the weekend mornings when i'm with baby alona we're watching a lot of soccer because the Premier League. But as soon as the Premier League stops this weekend, I think that's when There's I'll uh, five, start watching. Five Kevins. Okay. So what did we look at today? We had some amber samples where we had this lovely fruit fly. The omatidia, or those cells of the eye, were really, really well done. I think very clean seeing. That's Lita stopped when there was some um, some eating as well, too, of the creatures. The face, we did not get a good look at because the face had a bunch of bubbles, but at different angles, it did start looking a little bit cleaner in terms of that it's just the fruit fly with unique, with that fa the, the head features, the size of the eyes. All that kind of made it a little bit more lifelike, I suppose, and what it actually ended up like feeling and looking like. So it was a it was a good sample to look at, I think. Um, very necessary coffee acquired. Carlo! We're just rounding out the evening, my good sir. We're rounding out the evening, Carlo. Is that okay, Carlo the stream scribe? We're rounding out our evening. Rounding out the evening, Carlo. Um, we also, let's see, looked at this additional sample of amber where we identified a male ant. Very necessary, not necessary. No, 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 no. We're just rounding out the evening now, God alone. We're rounding out the evening, my good sir. Um, gonna go have dinner with the little one and Lita. I'm sorry, God alone. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I love you, Carlo. Um, again, we saw the the ocelli, which has the false eye. We saw the omatidial cells. We saw the thorax, the abdomen, the petiole. A lot of the good biology coming across in this sample here. Put that frown upside down. Sometimes. We also looked at some pod water samples. We found the amphipod, identified the lovely cliff Alistair McLean. We also saw a bunch of ostracods swimming around. Um, and tracking the amphipod was really cool to see. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Again, a lot of ostracods we saw today. We saw um, the velvet worm as well. And we saw it moving and digesting. So we even had um, some video of it doing the digestion process. And you can see its sensory bristles quite well. So we got a fair bit done.